Good evening, greetings, and salutations. This is Passionate Bliss, and I'm here again tonight with questions, comments, useless facts about me. First, go to my online store and purchase your own Black Love t-shirt from the Black Love t-shirt collection, mypassionatebliss.myshopify.com, okay? I need to tell you about my walk through the YouTube streets first. So I was walking through the YouTube streets, and I saw a young lady running by very fast. Her name is Shakari Richardson. She was an Olympic hopeful up until sometime yesterday where it came out that her um, drug test came back positive. Positive for what? Not steroids, but in fact, marijuana. And she lost her race. It was stripped from her, the one that was qualifying her to go to the Olympics to compete in the 100, which is her category. So she lost the right to compete because that race was taken from her. So she cannot compete in that race. And she does have a small chance that she'll be able to go provisionally as a part of the relay team. And maybe she can help in that way, but um, she won't get her signature race that she's broken records in. And so um, that's a disappointment for her. So I wanted to get give you a chance to listen to her apology and listen to her say what was her side of things and what was the cause of it and see what do you think is this an apology is this an excuse is she still America's darling take a look I would like to say to my fans and my family that my sponsorship um to the haters too I, I apologize as much as I'm disappointed. I know that when I swim on the track, I don't represent myself. I represent a community that has shown me great support, great love. And to y'all, I, I feel y'all. And so I apologize for the fact that I need to know how to control my emotions or deal with my emotions during that time. Um, and to the, and what I would just leave with my fans, or I would just leave out there is that like I tweeted and said yesterday, I'm human, we're human. Um, my statement, what I always say in my interviews, um, I wanna be as transparent as possible with you guys, whether it's good, whether it's bad, but when it comes to Shakira Richardson, it's never been a steroid. It will never be a steroid attached to the name Shakira Richardson. The charge and what the, the situation was, was marijuana. I'm not encouraging anybody to do it. I'm not saying, oh, don't do it or, or anything like that. But if you choose to do things um, in your personal time or things like that, you just should know, all right, be aware of the consequences or just know, or just find different ways to just cope or do what it is that you that will make you feel better. But sitting here, I, I just say, don't judge me because I am human, I'm, I'm you. I just happen to run a little faster. Um, okay. I understand there's gonna be people that still have something to say that don't necessarily understand. And I wouldn't let's even call them haters if that's uh, if they wanna choose to show their character of a person, even after me saying what I, it, I, I've said um, and putting myself out there, then that's just on you, your character, and you have to live with that. But I greatly appreciate being able to tell my side of the story. And like I said to my fans, my family, um, my sponsorship, and the haters, I greatly apologize if I let you guys down, and I did. And I just want to let y'all know this will be the last time to Olympics don't cheat Shakira Richardson, and this will be the last time the U.S. Um, doesn't come home with a gold medal in 100. And I feel Shakari. Eyes up against me. Shakari. And this is her explanation as to why she actually did decide to take marijuana, knowing this would disqualify her, knowing that this was everything she had been working for. This is the reason why she said she actually took the drugs. Positively and negatively in my life, when it comes to dealing with the relationship I have with my mother. So. That definitely was a very heavy topic on me. And people don't understand what it's like to have to. Our people do. We all have our different struggles. We all have our different things we deal with. But to put on a face, I have to go in front of the world and put on a face and hide my pain. Um, like, who? I don't know. Who are you? Or who am I to tell you how to cope when you're dealing with a pain or you're dealing with a struggle that you've never experienced before or that you've never thought you would have to deal with. Like, who am I to tell you how to cope? Who am I to tell you that you're wrong for hurting? 
So I think just honestly, just leading up to that, dealing with my mental health, dealing my with my mental as is with leading up to the games. Um, every time stepping on the track, definitely expected to be um, a record breaking time or something like that. So just with that, um, pressure in itself was also just another another thing. With this actually been my first full professional career, my first full professional. Um, this year due to you know the pandemic so just considering all of that all of that put together in a long time my, my agent my sponsor my my sponsorship my family uh, knowing we get all of this stuff so um Shakari, Shakari, I, I just want people to understand where you're Okay, so here's what's actually concerning for me about this apology. One, uh, very little accountability. Even though she does say, I apologize for the people I let down and disappointed. She then goes on to make an excuse. She says that, um, you know, uh, it was because of her sadness, the way she found out. She was shocked. She couldn't cope with her feelings. And um, then she said that... Um, to, that she deflected by talking about her haters. This is the kind of person you are if you don't forgive me. Um, and then, so that part was questionable to me if that was really an apology, if you deflect onto other people and then you give an excuse for why I just say, look, I was at fault, it was my fault. I take accountability, I'm sorry, and it won't happen again. Which she did say, but then she threw in some other stuff that kind of negated the actual apology, in my opinion. However, I do accept the apology. I do want her to um, do well. I do want her to qualify in the next few years when it comes around again that she can go to the Olympics. And I am glad that Nike stood behind her. She's been a rep for them for since 2019, and they understand what she did, and they said that they um, accept her apology and that she would still remain on with Nike. And uh, I'm glad. And in celebration, I will go buy a pair of Nike tomorrow because they did not drop her as a sponsor. And so, um, you know, I'm willing to accept the apology, but she's 21. She's young. And um, I think she should have had someone with her, like a PR rep, that could help her formulate a better apology. So I'm a little concerned that she was by herself at that time. Why was she by herself? Um, was anybody suspicious that she might want to take some drugs? Does she look sad? So I kind of wonder, you know, what kind of support system she has around her and, um, where they were then and where they are now actually so um hopefully she can wrap this up she can put this behind her she knows that she can't um use this form of relaxation as a method of coping and that this she will actually get the help that she needs and she will be bigger and better and come back brighter for the next olympic season and with that being said y'all have sweet dreams wait to find them all real but wait, first I want to tell you about something else that I noticed going on the last couple of weeks. A lot of people have. It was the whole TikTok strike. The black sector of TikTok decided to go on strike, in particular for Meg Thee Stallion's song, Thought-ish, that came out. Usually when the songs come out, the kids do a little TikTok dance, and then everybody copies it, and they all submit their own version to TikTok, and they dance to it, okay? But it came to be found out um, through actually, you know, it was a Jimmy Fallon show that they had the little white girl up there dancing, showing some of the TikTok dances and it turns out that the person who actually created it was black and that she was getting endorsements and um, deals and money and going on national television with a dance that she didn't create. She actually copied it from a black creator. And so um, an issue was made about it and then actually Jimmy Fallon had the actual black creator come back on the show and do her own dances that she created. And so this has been happening quite a bit apparently. And so the black TikTokers decided that they would go on strike, that they would not dance and um, for that song when it came out and they didn't. And it was funny how the white TikTokers, they had all this rhythm when it was Cardi B's Up record. Okay, first the black person put out their dance, then the white kids were able to do it and they had so much rhythm and they had so much pop and snap to it and they were hanging in there i was like okay these are i thought these were professional dancers why they were able to do the dances so well but it turns out they were just copycats <laughs> and so some would say culture vultures and so um some would say appropriation and so it turns out that they weren't actually all that hip they just were copycats and so this is what they look like when the black tiktokers stop dancing this is how they actually look and this was to um make the that make the stallions um thought-ish song okay and after the after a while a few weeks went by the black tiktokers decided they would go ahead and make a dance up for thought-ish for make the stallion and then would you look at the transformation and how the white tiktokers were able to dance again
isn't that amazing? Just like that, all the rhythm came back. And so I thought that was funny and I thought I would let you know about it. But I am tired of walking through the streets at this point. I'm going to go to bed. Y'all have sweet dreams. We have to find them all real.